Please rise for the singing of our hymn of praise, number 359. standing for our call to worship found in the bulletin but before I start I did forget one announcement that's to welcome Jean back in our congregation so thank you Jean <laughs> long time no see all right <clears throat> let us come together as part of God's beloved family we are indeed God's children let us gather today in God's house we have been faithful at times and we have strayed at times from God's love but God, God has never, never given up on us, always awaiting our return home. God's love for us is so real that Jesus came to lead the lost home. Blessed, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our affirmation of faith is number 884.
We believe in the one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the Savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal with every being. We believe in the Word of God, contained in the Old and New Testaments, as the tradition rule both the faith and the practice. We believe in the Church, those who are united in the living Lord, for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God, as the divine will realized in the human society, and in the family of God, where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness, and in the life of everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We come today to thank God for this day. We thank God for you. We've been praying for happenings around the world. Over in Russia, Ukraine, we're praying for them daily. We're praying for loved ones, family, and communities. We need a word from the Lord. We need to know that God is our savior. God is our strength. He's our rock of Gibraltar. And now it's the time that we go back to God, turn back to God, continue to go home towards God. Let us take a moment of silence, lift those things up in our lives, and then I will conclude with a prayer for all of us. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, God, for another opportunity to gather as a church and we lift up the name of Jesus together and we worship you, God, 
as your children and your creation. And, O God, that we come, God, send your Holy Spirit, O God, that we might feel your presence and power. Anoint us, O God, to continue to be your servants, O God, not only today, but tomorrow and forever. We thank you, God, for all things. We thank you for family and friends. We thank you, God, for this church being on the corner here for over 120 some years. And God, we just thank you for the building. We thank you, God, for the people, the families, O God, that are represented here, O God. And God, please give us, O God, your will for our lives. And God, we just thank you. And God, we just pray, God, that you will give us an opportunity, O God, to know you personally for ourselves, and that as we share, O oh God, that with others, we pray someone, O oh God, might come closer to you and might get to know you. And Lord, bless the church, O oh God. Bless our conference, our upcoming annual conference in June. Bless, O oh God, the people of the church, O oh God, and the conference around in Virginia. And Lord, we do thank you. Bless our leader, O oh God, Sarah Calvert, O oh God, that you, O God, give her strength. Oh God, to continue to do and lead the church, the administration part of it, and God, we just do thank you. Bless us, O oh God, we pray as your children as we pray together. Our Father, Amen. which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trust and against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Isn't it wonderful that a group of people can just take what's written on a piece of paper and either convert it to music or sing, and the beauty that it, it, that comes through from that? Just reading it is nothing, but hearing it is, is so, much, so much better. The Old Testament lesson is from Joshua chapter 5, verses 9 through 12. And to give you a little context to where it's coming from, because it was kind of plucked out of the middle of a story. It's not long after Moses had died, these, uh, the Jews had come out of Egypt, uh, and um, Moses had given their last words to them, and now Joshua is in charge of them. And it's not long before they are going to move and take the city of Jericho, but they haven't done that yet. So they're kind of celebrating the fact they've crossed into the Jordan. And they've crossed into a place called Gilgal, which doesn't mean anything to us, but in the, uh, in the original Hebrew, one of the, the uh, meanings of the word is, translates to kind of rolled away. And they have rolled away from the oppression of the Egyptians. That's how this is being interpreted here. So, <clears throat> verse 9. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt, and so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped at Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on that day, they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The epistle lesson is from 2 Corinthians, and this is the Apostle Paul in a letter to the Corinthians. The message is, is a vital and important one. He, he writes in typical Paul language that is like a lawyer, but I'm also going to read it slow, um, but he has some, some excellent points that he's making here. It's chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The gospel lesson is from Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 3, and then skipped to 11b through 32. <clears throat> I think I need to mention the verses that were skipped. There are three parables that uh, Jesus is telling. He's in the presence of his disciples, in the presence of Pharisees and scribes, and he's a very specific message that he's repeating three times in the three small parables. The first two only take up a couple of verses. It's the, it's the parable of... Uh, someone who has lost a sheep out of, their, out of their flock and the extent they go to finding the sheep, the, the sheep, they, they, they rejoice uh, and, he, and he wants his friends and family and, and all to rejoice with him that he's found the lost sheep. It's the same story with a woman who has lost one of her many coins who extends a lot of effort searching for that coin then she rejoices in finding it and wants to celebrate that with uh, her friends. Again, it's God is the one who has lost someone or someone is lost from God and the welcoming back, the rejoicing of all uh, when that individual, that the sheep or the coin are returned. And that's, that's us, of course. The last of uh, the three parables is the one that's actually in the liturgy today and that's the parable uh, of the, uh, the prodigal son and his brother. And the emphasis here is also on God welcoming the lost back, but there's a little bit more emphasis on the role of the brother in his reaction and what he need, needs and should do in welcoming his lost brother back for whom he was not terribly fond. So, one through three and then 11b. 
Now the tax collect now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he, Jesus, told them this parable. It was skipping down to the lost the prodigal son. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to the fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and, and to spare? But here I am in dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has gotten him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. You have never, yet you have never given me anything, even a young goat, so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, who has devoured your property and with prostitutes, you kill the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and it's come to life. He was lost and has been found. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Randy, for sharing the reading of the word of God that we will dive into a little bit later. I want to offer you an opportunity to give to God as God bless you.
We thank you, God, for these gifts. We offer them, O oh God, to you as well as ourselves. And now, God, receive us all in your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as you are able to. <clears throat> we have heard this parable many, many times. Uh, the parable of the lost son. But when you look at the entire chapter of that um, in Luke 15, it deals with losses uh, that people uh, incur. It, it helps us to think about our loss, about our decisions that we make sometime in our lives, uh, be they good or bad. And we all have sin, all falling short, and God always there to take us back in. So when we look at this here from a theological point of view, that God loved us, God created us, and God made us. And as we celebrate Lent season and soon Easter, we know that God made provision for us to come back home. The earth is not our home. We all are pilgrims traveling through. And no matter how much you say up in this world, how much you gain, you can't take it with you. We always think that we can, and the more we get, the more we want. But let us say, focus on getting more of Christ in our hearts and our lives, and we thank God uh, for that. We all have an opportunity uh, to, to get more of Christ. I think about the soldiers, the veterans who are walking around today, some come back. When you, when you go through war, it's, uh, you never come back the same. Some do, some don't, some won't. But at the same time, emotionally, you have an emotional tie on you. Uh, some people have nightmares reliving the war. Some have to take medication to be able to deal with that. Whatever decision that we make in our lives, we have to deal with it, be it good or bad. I like Joshua, who was the successor to Moses. Uh, he was a warrior. Uh, he was preparing the people back. After they came back from exile, they were never the same. Being prisoner for many years, being captured for many years, being away from your God and your religion for many years. It never was the same. But at the same time, Joshua brought them back and he had a lot of work to do in order to get things back to where they were. In the new beginnings, as I would say, new beginnings. They have to deal with dealing all over again, new beginnings, and it's refreshing, refreshing to begin anew. Sometimes you uh, work in a project, and sometimes you know you wonder, gee, this don't look right. Do you keep on, or do you just tear it up and start all over again? Just like the potter on the potter wheel when he molds the clay, if it makes one flaw, he breaks it all up and start all, all over again. And you'll feel better about that, amen? We, when we start over again, we will feel better about ourselves and about who we are in God, amen? So now, what, you, you know, the story is interesting, I won't delve into that right now, but the story is interesting to note that we make decisions sometimes based on how things are at the present, at the moment. We don't look beyond the moment. Uh, we need to look beyond church the moment when we make decisions. Uh, I used an illustration one time that uh, we were getting ready to leave Vietnam. The waters were clear as far as you could see. Not a wind, not a, a wave. It was like glass. You could look for miles and miles and miles away. However, two or three hours into our voyage, 
the storm, the seas became rough. The wind began to blow. And at the same time, it was so bad to the point that we had to call General Porter to, to, hack, uh, to, to hatch the doors down, uh, to lock everything down, to secure everything, and, um, and at the same time, in two days, that storm was just like that. So you can't always, you cannot always judge the present moment to the future. And when I thought about that, and I thought about the prodigal son, everything was good. He said, Father, money can't buy you everything. Money, you know, you take the money and, and money won't last long. But at the same time, it was uh, smooth in his life. And the Bible says that he went away to a different, distant country. He went away and, there, and, and then everything was going okay. He spent his money and there was a famine in the land. Did he know that would happen? No. We sometimes make decisions by doing what we think is best for us. But rather than praying, you know, I, I, you know his father <clears throat> did not argue with him in the text, did not say, well, no, I'm not going to give it to you. He was a willing father. Okay, when you go ahead on and make your bed, make your bed. If you make it hard, you got to lean in. Amen? You ever heard that phrase before? Have, have you ever heard that phrase? You make your bed hard, you have to lay in. <laughs> but at the same time, that did not deter him from changing his mind. It did not deter him from, Father, give me all I have. And that is an insult to his father. Because what they're saying, Father, I wish you were dead. And we say things sometimes not even realizing what the significance of it is. I wish you were dead. So give me my money now. I can't wait until you leave in order to get my share. I got some living to do. I, I need to go out and, and, and venture out in the world to make sure that I know what life is all about. But you see, the father did not argue him with him. He did not say no, but he completely gave him his portion. And you know, when I thought about that, I thought about God with us. We think we know what we want. Until we become mature, we really don't know what we need. God is in control. So God took uh, as I see God working in all of this here, it uh, wasn't human giving or thinking. Uh, but, you know, and sometimes families have given their children something else. So, all right, well, you give, you spend it, it's yours. Here it is. Don't come back. <laughs> if you come back, you SOL. Sorry, I don't love and, and you, you make use of it, and, and some can handle and manage and make more from it, and some can't. Some people just cannot handle money. They think they can buy everything at one time. Well, we got a lot to learn about that, right? <laughs> so now, only God's grace can help us when we need help. Young man came to himself, as the scripture says. He came to himself. He began to think, how many hard servants do my father have at home? And them hit out here eating in the pig pen, eating what they eat. That, that, that's a pig's or offense to Jews. Living with the pigs, eating with the pig eating and glad to get. He did not account for all that. But then it knocked him back to his senses. How many hard servants do my father have? I think I will. I, I think I will get up and go home and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. If you would just take me as one of your hard servants, Lord, that would be enough for me. I'll be satisfied. I'll be happy. The mental anguish we go through. 
we sometimes he wants to lower himself to that standard. Mentally, he needs to be healed. He need, mentally, he needs to know that God loves us no matter what. A loving father will love us no matter what. In the first part of this parable, 15 chapter later, lose the coin. And she sweeps the floor until she finds it. And when she finds it, then she rejoices. I have found my coin. And I thank God for showing the human part of this parable because there is jealousy among siblings, among family, among friends, in the churches. There is jealousy all around. The young boy said, well, and, and I like the father not argue with his son to hear, take it, and he was hoping in his heart that he would return. He did not know how the father felt. And the father waited and looked for him every day to come back. New beginning. Was it ever a time in growing up you got yourself in trouble? And your parents gave you another chance? Hello? <laughs> gave you another chance? And we'd be pleading to them, give us another chance. I will do better. But then, and when they give you another chance, that's a good feeling. Amen? Go, go, you won't go to bed hungry tonight or you will not get that lashing that they normally would give you. Not now, but they save it up until later. <laughs> but we learn from our mistakes. But when you've got a new beginning, everything is okay. So I like the story because it shows it uh, it shows myself, it shows me who you are, and shows me what a great God we serve. So when you lose everything, when you don't have nothing, where can you go? When you're living out with the pigs, and I say, come out from among the pigs. If you're still living out among the pigs, come out. God got something better for you. And I can imagine in my own mind's eye that, that the young man decided he was going to go home. Did not know what his father would say or how he would receive him. But you know, it's love. It love it's love. And I, I don't think the father ever stopped praying for him because he was his son. He continued to pray. And the reality one day came true, became true because his father looked up down the road as he would do every day and saw him coming back home. He looked and look, and look, when he realized that it was his son, he did not wait until the son came to the port, but he ran out, embraced him, and kissed him, and welcomed him home. Welcome home, my son. Put a fine ring on his finger and, and killed the fattest calf, and to celebrate. My son once was lost, but now he is found. Amazing grace, isn't it? Isn't it grace? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like us. We thank God. So when the son came home, he said, Father, I'm willing to be one of your hired servants. He said, no, you're still my son. No matter what decisions you have made, what choices you made, whether it be good or bad, you are still my son. Isn't that a blessing to know that we are still God's children? No matter how far we go, we cannot outrun the grace of God, the outreach of God. And I think the psalmist said it better. Whither should I go from thy spirit, or whither should I flee from thy presence? If I make my bed in hell, God, you are there. If I take the wings and fly to the utmost parts of the world, God, you are there. God, you never leave us. You never forsake us. You're always with us. So now, we're going to throw a party. And we're going to throw a party. Amen? We're going to throw a celebration because our son once was dead, but now is found. And you know, this is what we should do. We should, when a person comes and gives his, his or her life back to God, to Christ, we should celebrate. We should celebrate. The second part of the journey is the brother heard all this dancing and music and singing and 
And he was out in the field, as dutiful as the sun, working in the field, and jealousy comes in. We don't have no right to be jealous of no one. He should have been rejoicing himself. You can't tell a person what to do, but it would have been nice if he would say, Brother, where have you been? I'm glad you made it back. But no, the brother didn't, but the father did. We thank God for that. So now, he had the brother, the lost son, was thinking that he was not worthy. We sometimes feel that way. We're not worthy of what the Lord has for us. Ears have not heard, eyes have not seen. And just like when Joshua, he brought the people back um, from exile, from Egypt, they had to get readjusted. If you look at the slavery people, those who were free from slavery didn't know, how, didn't know what to do with it. Nowhere to go, no land. Some of them wanted to stay in slavery just to have a place to stay. But when the some man free you, you're free indeed. And, and some fled north, some ran this way, and almost like whenever you have to start over again, it's a new beginning. It's good to have new beginnings in our lives, amen, because we can get too comfortable where we are and don't need to do anything, but God is always with us. Know that God is with us. And God, grace, and mercy will lead us all the way into the end. New beginning. When have you have had a new beginning to occur in your life? When was the last time you had a new beginning? And God is the author. God is the founder of new beginning. God can take our lives and, and make us whole again. Man, we could say, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the new beginnings that you give all of us. And we accept it, O oh God, and we appreciate them. And not to become jealous of anyone else, O oh God, but rejoice with them. And Lord, we just thank you right now for Cranford Church and the community we are part of. And as we, O oh God, will begin new beginnings, O oh God, perhaps with a new, another minister, O oh God, we know, God, you're going to be there. You're going to go before us, O oh God, and your will is going to continue to be done. And Lord, we do thank you, God, for new beginnings and also a uh, new beginning for me. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn. Living for Jesus, 2149, Faith We Sing. Living for Jesus.
our choice and our decision is to live Jesus every day. We thank God for Jesus Christ. And as we continue to celebrate Jesus Christ, we pray to get back to the Father through Jesus Christ. And now may the peace of God go with you. Peace of God be with you until we all meet again on next Sunday. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.